Welcome to the West 7th Wool Podcast. This is the podcast about our local yarn shop here in idyllic Fort Worth, Texas, West 7th Wool. Welcome. So what's going on this week, This these past few weeks? How was Yarn Crawl, Hunter? Yarn Crawl was good. It was busy, and busy is good. That is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It wasn't as busy as last year or the year before. No, it was wasn't, but yeah, that was completely expected, so yeah. it wasn't a surprise, in it, but it was still pretty busy so yeah we did all of our trunk shows virtually Mm -hmm. on zoom and recorded them yep and got a lot of uh got some good feedback on that actually a lot of people felt comfortable participating where they may not have felt as comfortable um, otherwise or they were uh, a long way away and this made it easy for them to participate which is really cool happy to be able to do that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. had a good time yeah so what's going on uh, this week Man, I can't think of anything specific. It is October. Halloween is on spin approach. Spin together. Oh, spin together. Yeah, <laughs> I don't spin. I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> that thing's like just completely off my radar. I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, three of us, I think, three of us have been spinning. Mm-hmm. Um, Kristen and Mel and I. Mel's our team captain. Right. So spin together replaces spinzilla which was a TNNA sponsored TNNA being the national needle arts association, which is no longer. Right. Um, but they stopped doing Spinzilla the year before and this other organization took it over. Yeah. Or they basically kind of mirrored it, I guess would be a way, I guess, yeah. way to say it. So it's a week long spinning competition, spin as much as you can. Um, there are very little rules. Yeah. It's really pretty casual and, yeah. Like by default, and then on top of it, our team is also really pretty casual, you know. Yeah, and we, um, join up and participate. If, it, if it weren't during a pandemic, we would get together at the shop and spin, and then get together at a place after the shop to close. Last year it was Whole Foods mm-hmm. or a tea shop down on West 7th. Um, this year it's virtual, so some Zoom meetings, right? Zoom is a thing, Zoom is a thing, mm-hmm. so, um. Kristen, why don't you grab that? Yeah, Kristen dyed some fiber for us at the mm. studio, and I've already, I've already spun the Rambouillet, and she did it. She, we've got Rambouillet, Falkland, and Merino, and the Rambouillet I think is a twenty-one or nineteen point five micron, mm-hmm. which means it's very soft. Mm. So those are my Rambouillet spins. Nice, and we have more of that color too. That color is called Galaxy Quest. Galaxy uh, Quest. It's not. Uh, we have a bunch of yarn over here, which is our fall colors. You know, kind of Halloween based. Yeah, we'll talk about those. Yeah, we'll minute. get to that in a minute. But basically, it's not one of those. So it's like all the way oh, over there. Oh, so you put it over there. It's not. Oh, got got it. It's not seasonal. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's like. It ever, doesn't. It's evergreen. That's huh. what they call that when you can use it any time. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't get to play with the fall colors. Oh, hold up the fall leaves one again. It's really pretty. It doesn't get to play. <laughs> so sad. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So that's what's going on. Um, speaking of Halloween spooky times, um, we might do one of those virtual trunk shows with Leon Alexander mm-hmm. for Halloween. That'd be cool. A little pre-Halloween. TBD. So, yeah, keep an eye out on the website and on the socials mm-hmm. for more info on that. Cool. Um, and then, oh, I wanted to talk about our, our regular twice a week social knit night. Right. Still Thursday, 6 to 8, but I had to move the Tuesday tea time, craft time from 4 to 4.30. Mm. Okay. So that's enough. So is that now like 4.30 to 6.30? Or it's 4.30 to 6. Gotcha. Okay. 4.30 to 6. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on. You want nice. to talk about our house? Oh, it's Socktober. Socktober. It's Socktober. Mm-hmm. You know what we still have a lot of? 52 weeks of socks. Mm-hmm. We do. It's an awesome book. It's a huge book. Mm-hmm. 52 sock patterns. Yeah, and I guess since it's October, we can't, like, um, promote it as a stocking stuffer, so to speak, but it could be, it could be it like could a pumpkin be. stuffer. It could be, or you yeah. could save it for a Christmas gift for a knitter, if your knitter can wait that long, I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they better not know about it if that's the case, because that's a long time to wait. It's a pretty popular book. It is. Mm -hmm. Just buy it for yourself. There you go. your Christmas present. Uh Uh-huh. That's a thing, too. (laughs) All right. Um, And then do you want to talk about our West 7th Wool? I would love to talk about our West 7th Wool. Spooky season colors. Is that what y'all are officially calling it? Yeah, spooky season. So the first one I want to talk about is this one. It's called Cauldron. Mm -hmm. And then the theme is kind of things that you would, that a witch would put in the cauldron. Ah, cool. So. Okay. We'll start with uh, this one. Okay. Foxglove. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got Nightshade. That would make sense. Apple Seeds. Maybe, <laughs> but I really like that color. It's kind of, it's like blood color almost without being, it's really pretty. Apple seeds are brown, technically There's speaking. some black in that. There is. Hmm. Okay, what about this one? Okay, that would be wild mushroom. Okay, I mean, I'd put that in my soup. Venom, okay, okay. And this one? Poison dart. And on the surface, it looks just like a regular blue, but if you look really closely, there are black specks in there. I don't know if they're coming through. It's hard to see on camera, and it's hard to catch with your eye if you don't if you're not looking really close. They're very subtle black specks in that blue. Very subtle, like me. Mm. <laughs> so those are our Halloween. Oh, nice. spooky season. Spooky season, yes. Spooky season. Yeah, and there's also... um, Things things that a witch would put in their cauldron. Oh, yeah, uh the fiber. We've also got some other fiber that lines up. Besides, you already saw the fall leaves, which you probably wouldn't put fall leaves in a cauldron. But, you know, I don't judge. I don't know what witches do. Yeah. Uh, Then Granny Smith, I guess if you're, like, using your cauldron to make some pie. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's the witch's name. (laughs) There we go, Granny Smith the witch. And then finally, Gloom, which is more of a mood. I like it. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So, any any other new products that you want to, anything drop into the shop? No, not really. It's mostly just been yarn from the dye studio and fiber from the dye studio. You know what sold, almost sold completely out during the crawl were? um, Yeah, the uh, little notion cases. Notion cases and stitch markers from Firefly Notes. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, We have ordered more. They're inbound. They're about two weeks out, I think. She sent Mm -hmm. an email and said it would take her about three weeks. So those are inbound. Sounds about right. Okay. So do you have any finished objects? I do not have any finished objects, nor do I even bring anything that's on the needles because I totally slacked off. What about you? (laughs) It's your day off. It is my day (laughs) off, and I still need to edit this. Uh, What about you? Okay, so I have been spinning, so I have one finished Spin. Nice. This is um, this was some Targi from Forest Fiber Arts. Are you sure that's not Feederbrook Farm? Feederbrook Farms. I'm sure. Do you want to get get one and compare it? Sure. Um, I haven't washed and soaked this yet. I just finished plying it this morning. It's a two ply. Let's see if he can find one he thinks is the closest. And I do have a little bit of overspun places in here that will probably relax out after I soak it and thwack it. Thwacking is my favorite part of spinning. It just means you get to get it wet and hit it really hard against You probably don't need to share too many of your details with them. Thwacking? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, hold that up. What is that? Theaterbook Farm. This is Entropy DK. Entropy DK. Do we know the colorway? It is... Kinetic energy. Oh, I did, that's pretty close. Mm-hmm. Really close. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Good I job. would say I'm gonna say the feeder brook is softer. Um. After I wash this, it might be a little softer. But what is it's this? BFL. It's BFL. Mm-hmm. B, uh, BFL might be softer than Targi, or maybe it's just the way I spin. After I wash it, it might be a little bit, a little bit mm-hmm. better. But that is some two ply, targi, 
fiber that I got from Forest Fiber Arts Virtual Trunk Show. Nice. Because mm -hmm. not only was I hosting the trunk shows, I was shopping the trunk shows too. I didn't know that you were able to do that. I didn't know that Why you're allowed. Why would I be able to shop the trunk shows? Everybody's able to it's shop the for, trunk it's shows. It's for them. It's not for it's you. <laughs> All right. The other thing I have finished is more Targi. This is from uh, the West 7th Wool Studios. This was actually a test dye that Kristen did. She did a low immersion and a high immersion dye of just some um, some red and it turned out pink. And this was my first ever chain ply attempt. So it's a three ply because it's chained, kind of like a crochet chain that you do the plying with. And tell me what you think about that. It looks, it's a little different. It's very tight because this is the first time I, I did it yeah. and I didn't get enough take up on the wheel. Yeah, it looks like there's some kind of tension issue going on here. Yeah. But that that's just a it's over. It's crazy overspun, but it would make a cool art yarn type. Almost looks like dreadlocks or something. And then also it's kind of rough because it's really springy mm -hmm. and really textured. Did you uh, soak that? I did. I had to soak it because there's a before picture on my on the Instagram stories, mm -hmm. and it was so curly and crazy that um, you couldn't do anything with it. It was crazy, crazy overspun. Hmm. But that's a little bit better. I'll probably ply the other one today, and then I'm going to spin some of the fiber baron fiber. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's a merino. It's, it's super fiber wash. baron approved. Uh, super yeah, it is a super wash. wash. So that's, those are my only finished objects besides these two. Nice. Busy spinning. Yeah, it's uh, it's spin together week. I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't know if we if, if I told you about that. Well, it's been a few weeks since we've done this. <laughs> um, do you have any works in progress? Negative. Any whips? What you got? I do. Um, before spin together, I was mm -hmm. working on a shop sample with our Zoom meeting color, mm -hmm. which is this blue and pink. This is the Velicor by Andrea Mallory. It's a boxy top that's knit from the bottom up. Yep. So that's the bottom of it. And this, this is you split the front and the back and these will be the armholes on the side. But it's kind of an interesting waffly texture. It's been fun, I guess. Fun, but it kind of a long slog. Uh, is it kind of on the more tedious side? or A little. A little, maybe. Mm. But interesting because it's not just stocking at purgatory mm. all the way around. And I've got... Um, I'm using one of our new um, one of our new products with this stitch clover stitch holder. How's that working out for you? Working out great. It's it's holding my back stitches because you knit it in the round until you get to the under the arms and then you split it in half. So this the half is on this long and it just um, it's like a needle on a nylon cord with a, a bead and a stopper on the end. So you slide all your stitches onto the needle, onto the cord, and then there's a little hole right there that you can connect it together and it's stayed secure. Cool. So that's the long one and then the short ones are for sleeves. Mm -hmm. What is this? Um, 30? 24 to 36, whereas I think the shorter one's like, what, a 16? 9 to 16. Mm -hmm. so, I like those. Usually I just use waste yarn. Now I don't have to waste any yarn. Yep. And I'm sure it's a little, it's um, more fluid to use because, you know, it's not like on leather, for example, which is all kind of grippy and difficult to. Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm knitting, it's October and I'm knitting socks. I'm knitting 
a pattern I've never knit before called Vanilla is the New Black by Annie, Annie, A-N-N-E-H, Annie Fletcher. Um, it's, look it up, the heel on that is really interesting. Hmm. Never done this heel before. It looks interesting. And I've never knit from a sock blank before. Yeah. How's, Ever. How's that working out for you? It's okay. I really love the sock blank. I got it at the Forest Fiber Arts trunk show. Not the Forest Fiber Arts, the Hidden Door trunk show. Mm -hmm. Kristen and Amy made this, and it's amazing. What's the colorway called? <laughs> you want to hold it up? Mm -hmm. It's called Dumpster Fire 2020. <laughs> so There we go. I figured I'd start in Socktober, I'd start my Dumpster Fire 2020 socks. And at first, I, it's this is really soft, and it would be super easy just to pick up the stitches on the end and knit some fringe or just tie off some fringe and use it as a scarf. But it was pointed out to me that it would be bad luck because really, you need to unravel the Dumpster Fire of 2020 mm -hmm. and make it into something new. So here, here it is so far. I'm just getting to the actual dumpster. There's these tiny little specks of blue and yellow. And I've knit up the, the field of green in the sky already. So, and with the sock blank, I, I think your stitches might be a little bit squiggly until they're blocked out. Just because they're so... Yeah, I've always kind of had reservations about knitting off of a sock blank simply because it's already knit up and when you mm -hmm. unravel it, it the yarn is well it's all kinked up or whatever yeah i don't know if that would present any kind of issues when knitting it up and these sold out fast yeah awesome yeah you know there are some other like dumpster fire There's, patterns and well i thought you were talking about 2020 <laughs> there I, somebody recently I, I saw the pattern for it it's a it's a christmas decoration where it's a knitted, like, dumpster on fire. Nice. But this is a cool sock blank. What does that have to do with Christmas? It's like commemorating 2020, you get a, you buy or make an ornament that commemorates oh, an, the oh, year. Oh, so it's like an ornament. It's a Christmas ornament. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm. And then the other thing that I'm about to cast on, I am winding yarn right now as we speak. What I'm yarn is that? putting it in a ball. This is um, the West 7th Wool Merino DK. Mm-hmm. Nice. So it's an it's the eighty five fifteen I believe right eighty five super fine, which um, means it's a high micron. Okay. Is it, can you explain microns? You know, you know. I can't even help my kid with math anymore. <laughs> can you expect me to explain microns? <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the consistency of the wool. It's the fineness of the hair of the sheep. Right. Mm -hmm. So. The higher the count, the the um, softer. Right. It will be. So um, I've I've actually had a few people email, or or inquire, about how to wind their yarn if they don't have a swift and a ball winder. Which has increasingly come up in the past several months. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is one way you can do it. This is called a nostapine. You can also use just a stick. You can also just use your thumb. You just wind the yarn around your thumb. You can not use anything at all. You can just start a little ball and then wrap it around. Um, that's what the lollipop balls look like. Mm -hmm. but they're just wrapped into yarn. Um, and I just have this draped over one knee as I'm sitting and talking. Um, you can drape it over the back of two chairs like this to keep it tight especially if it's um fingering weight mm -hmm. yeah you, but you just definitely you want to make sure you get draped on something before you cut yeah. any of the ties loose because if don't you cross lay it the down streams, flat as we've seen in ghostbusters that could be potentially catastrophic yeah don't lay it down flat okay our screen went blank for a hot second yep but this uh, DK weight. Well, have we've been talking for about twenty minutes, so I'll probably. This doesn't take longer than thirty minutes, so you could watch a TV show and do this. 
I've done fingering weight yarn in 35, 40 minutes, a skein of fingering weight. Mm -hmm. so, Whereas that would normally take about seven or eight minutes using our yarn winder for comparison's sake. Yeah, most of the projects I've done this this year, March on, um, I've wound the yarn like this myself at home. Mm -hmm. I haven't haven't brought it up here for my uh, chief yarn winder to wind on the ball winder. Which would not be an issue if it needed to happen. So. But this is, e it's easy to do. Um, it doesn't take as long as you think it would. You can really inspect all your yarn, like every inch of it. If you think there might be a break in it, you can deal with the break then. You can rush and join it, I guess, if you wanted. You can spit splice it if you're into that. If it's 100% wool. Yeah, I don't think I'd recommend unless it's a very specific fiber type. Uh, but you can deal with that um, as it comes up. Or color changes. If you if you have a specific color change in your pattern that you want to deal with, you can do it as you're winding into a ball. Cool. So, oh, and I'm going to knit um, the coat of arms hat with this. Really, what's up? It's um, it's a hat with, I think it's got cables and an interesting stitch pattern, and it's written by Leon Alexander Yarns. Oh, wow. I know. It's a cool. nice hat. It's a really nice hat. Mm -hmm. So he's just uh, he's, staying active. He's, huh? doing, he's got two hat patterns. That coat of arms came out um, a little while ago, mm -hmm. and then the second companion hat is um, Crown Jewels, I think. Which has bobbles. Oh, cool. It's and what, also a cool hat. What weight yarn is that made in? Do you happen to know? I don't. I know this one is DK. I would hope that you do since you're wine, preparing DK yarn for it. You never know. Yeah. Uh, I'm crazy like that. Oh, speaking of patterns that don't use the weight of yarn that I would want them to, the Ursa sweater, which is a really cool sweater. Um, is now going to be in sport weight. Hmm. What was it previously? Bulky. Bill. I can't wear that here in Texas. No. So, um, she's rewriting it to for lighter weights. I think it, I think she's got both a sport and a worsted weight. Nice. So I am really excited about so the sport. So three weight. versions all together. Yeah, yeah. And it's Jacqueline, I think. Is mm -hmm. the Is that sound right? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, uh huh. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I'm vaguely familiar. I know I've heard of the uh, pattern before, the but I, I couldn't pick it out of the lineup. Yeah. It's a crop top, but you don't really have to make it cropped. That's why it's on my radar. Because it's a crop top? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got prizes to give away. We do indeed. So our prize from last uh, episode was this uh, tumbleweed. Socks. Good. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's got the sock yarn itself, self-striping, plus uh, contrasting, well, matching, really. Fitting for Socktober. Yeah, mini for uh, toe and or heel and or cuff, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, um, prior to this, Hunter went ahead and brought up the random number generator on his phone. I did indeed. So Save a little time this time. Yeah, how many comments did we have? There were 45 comments. I actually prepped this. I actually wrote I know, down this notes. is weird. I actually wrote down notes. Uh, 45 comments. What's your random number generator? All right. And engage. <laughs> Ooh, this one's easy. What is it? Four. Four. All right. I'll bring it up mine. I actually have the comments loaded this time, so. We're crazy prepared. I might not even have to cut any of this. Wanda Ivy. Congratulations, Wanda. You're the winner. Um, yay. Our question last time was help us uh, name a color of green that we had. Um, and I we, we went with Leah Testa's uh, Envy. We mm -hmm. called it Envy. But Wanda uh, said Hunter Green, which is also quite nice. I, I approve. Congratulations, Wanda, if you're watching. That had no influence over the results before. of this <laughs> contest. It was random. It was completely random. Completely random. Although Wanda is really lovely. I'm glad you won, Wanda. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this week we're going to give away 
All right, this week we are giving away since a it's skein so of hunters sock. Yarn. Since it's Socktober, Socktober, let's give away some hunter sock in a spooky color. Ooh, venom. Venom. I like that color. It's blues, not blues. It's greens with a tiny, tiny hint of really light blue. I think. Do you see, is that light blue in there? Um, maybe a tiny tiny that's like a minty green maybe not blue yeah i don't know if I've seen. it's all kinds of greens right spooky season yeah and you can contrast it do like a contrasting heel and like a purple or something like that mm -hmm. not that we're giving that away too should we do a really easy question like what's your favorite sock pattern if you have one sure <laughs> really well i mean unless you can think of something else but sock related would Socktober? be appropriate okay what is your favorite sock pattern if you've never knit socks before what is your favorite thing to knit that's not socks okay <laughs> I'm, I'm, help me help you help me to help you yeah help me to help you anything about socks do you wear socks and sandals uh -huh. do you have a favorite pair of socks there you go do you like tall socks or do you like the shorty socks or the no-show socks? Or do you like the socks that like have like the individual toes? <laughs> Who <laughs> likes those? I don't know. They're weird. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. We didn't forget anything, did we? I'm sure we did. But I don't know <laughs> what it is. You say that every time I make a grocery list. Yeah. Because it's true. I'm sure I mean, we did. Yeah. I'm sure we did. All right. That's it from us. Um, thank you so much for watching. All right. Bye. Bye.